Hello, ladies and gents. We are continuing on with Unit A, ANOVA, Analysis of Variance, and we just took a look at the one-way ANOVA test. We're going to just briefly talk about the two-way ANOVA test. I'm not going to actually require you to do any problems with that, so it'll be a real quick run-through on this particular one here. This particular problem here was our original trees and heights, uh, provinces and tree heights example. So this, of course, is the nominal variable where we're taking a look at three provinces. And so those are the three treatments, Alberta, BC, and Ontario. And then this, uh, these are the tree heights, so that's the interval variable. And those are represented in feet. And so we have nominal versus interval. That is a candidate for ANOVA. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that, uh, well, there's a couple of problems. One is that you're not going to be using four trees from Alberta to represent all the trees. So it's likely to be more like 400 trees. But the other thing, too, is that, well, there's more than one type of tree. So you really can't compare average heights of trees when you've got pines and you've, you've got uh, maples and 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 ash trees and so on like that, poplars. So we need to take a look at, well, what about the different types of trees here? So I had originally crossed this out here as I started, but I'm going to uncross it now and say, what if we have not just a one-way classification of the heights of the trees, but a two-way classification? So we classify according to one nominal variable, which is the, the province, and then a second nominal variable, which is the type of tree. So what we have here then is pine trees, spruce trees, maple trees, and birch trees representing the rows, and of course the provinces representing the, the columns here. So the type of tree also then is a nominal variable here. And so this is what we call a two-way ANOVA test. Now, by the way, is you're not going to have just one tree representing Alberta pines, and we'll get to that on the next page. But there, there are a lot of types of two-way ANOVAs where actually one number in the cell does work. We're not going to go into that because it's, we just don't have time to go into it in this course here. But I do want to just briefly talk to you about two-way ANOVAs in case you ever run into them. So what we do here is we, we take our our formula here about SST, and remember it was originally SST is equal to SSB plus SSW. So the amount of variation between the treatments and then the amount of variation within. And we're going to take the SSW here and we're going to split it into two terms here. And so now I've got actually uh, two SSB terms. Oops. I've got two SSB terms right here. So there's the SSB between the columns, that's what the little C stands for, and then the SSB for the the rows, or in ANOVA language they use the term blocks. So that's why there's a, a B down there, but you could just as easily put down an R if you want there. So we've actually got two different SSB terms, and then whatever is left over is called SSE, which is SS air or sum of squares air so that's all the other kind of um, uh, variation and noise which is left over getting back to the uh, original problem here of the the one-way ANOVA so let's let's ignore the type of tree right now Alberta bees Alberta trees BC trees and Ontario trees why is it that Alberta trees different in height within Alberta well, uh, one is because of the type of tree, which we're going to be talking about here. But even if you're just taking a look at all of the aspen or trees or the evergreens or something like that, why, why are some of them larger than others? Well, it's because of things like uh, soil condition and how much water they get and how close they are to, to other trees, right? Whether they're crowded or not, and therefore how much sunlight that they're getting and how much pollution is in the air in that area and of course uh, disease and critters and all that kind of stuff so there's a lot of other factors that go into it 
And so when we're dealing with ANOVA problems, then the, the SSW takes into account those other factors there. And when we're talking about a two-way ANOVA here, then the SSE, SS error, is all those other factors which are not accounted for in the model. And we'll see that again, actually, when we get into regression, because regression also uses an ANOVA. You thought you were going to be done with it. You're not. So what we do down here then is we take the original SSW and we break that down now into an SS between the rows or blocks and then whatever is left over is the SSE. And so taking a look at our original ANOVA table down here, what we've done is we've taken, this was originally the SSB, sorry, the SSW row and we break that down into two other rows here. And the degrees of freedom are still k minus 1 for the original SSB, the SSB for the columns, nt minus 1 down here for SST. But we take the nt minus k and we break that down into two components, b minus 1 times, and then uh, for SSE, k minus 1 times b minus 1. And that then gives you a couple of f star formulas here. So this is the one where we would be testing the column effects, right? So in this case, it would be the provinces. And then this would be the one where we would be testing the block effects, the row effects, which is the type of, of uh, tree that we have here. And so you've got two F star. It's actually two different tests then. And so I just wanted to show that to you. I'm not going to work through this particular example here. You can certainly do that if you want. I do want to mention, though, here that, again, it's kind of goofy to talk about, in this particular example, taking one pine tree from Alberta and using it to represent all the pine trees from Alberta. That doesn't make sense. And, and so what we can do then is you can almost think of this as being like a three-dimensional thing and so you have not just columns and rows but you also have some depth to it or another way to think of it is is stuffed in that one cell here where we've got the the 40 pine trees is let's say you've got uh, 50 pine trees so there's actually 50 different numbers there so again whether you think of that as three-dimensional or just a bunch of numbers stuffed in there that's a more practical kind of thing there. And so that's something that they that we call here uh, an ANOVA problem with interaction and just that there's a bunch of pine trees in Alberta. So what we do in that particular case then is we've got our SST is equal to our SSB columns, that's our original SSB, and then the SSB for the blocks, and then we, we take that SSE and we split it into two terms, SS interaction, to take into account that we've got 40 pine trees, or so, and then, uh, or however many we've got, and then whatever is left over from there. So that means taking that SSE term here, and splitting it into two columns here, or two rows, pardon me. So you've got the SSE for the interaction, which is found by this, and then the SSE, the degrees of freedom, are this here. So that gives you actually three tests here, which is looking at the column effects, in this case the provinces, the row effects or block effects, which are the type of trees, and then the interaction, which is actually looking at then that the pine trees themselves um, inter, uh, there's differences between them and so we take a look at those. So that is three different tests that we have here. And that's all I'm going to say about that. The next part here is talking about the ANOVA conditions and I'm going to get back to this one a little bit later in the next video. So this is going to be just a, the end of a very short video and one that you um, don't really need to know how to do the calculation, it's just that there is two-way ANOVAs. So let's end it here.